like to say good afternoon. Uh, my name is Robert Robinson, and I'm going to speak on behalf of First Congregational Church. I'm going to talk about encouragement, and I'm going to approach it from two directions. I'm going to approach it from the fact that how you can get your home blessed, and the other way is maintaining your spiritual focus and direction. I'm going to come out of uh, uh, First Psalms 1 through 6, and it reads as such, Blessed is the man that walked not into the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. I want you to hold on to that thought right there. Verse 3 says, And he shall be plant, like he shall be a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season, and his leaves shall also not wither. For so ever he does, he shall prosper. I want you to hold on to that thought. But the ungodly are not so, but they are like a chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I'd like to just quickly say, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to minister this word today. Lord, we pray that in some way, some soul will be lifted, some head will be lifted, some heart will be lifted by what they hear in this short sermonette today. We'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, how do you get your house blessed? I just spoke on Psalms 1 and 1 through 6. Now, Jesus lays a path out for us to get blessed, but we have to figure out, are we ready to walk in it? And we have to start by one step at a time. First of all, I'd like to say, number one, you have to saturate yourself in the Word of God. The Scripture says we should meditate day and night. Secondly, we have to situate ourselves by living the Word by being a witness, by serving in church, by being an example in your community as well with your friends and family. Number three, we have to satisfy yourself with God's word, his will and his way. And that includes faithfulness and staying from the world, being, <clears throat> being in the world but not of the world. Number five, we have to sanctify ourselves in his truth. Jesus said, Sanctify them in your truth, and your word is true. Now they know everything you have given comes from you. God has blessed us in so many ways. Submit, number six, submit yourself to God and realize that this is a continual need and we'll have to relinquish our rights to the Lord. Number seven, stand firmly on his promises. Normally, that his, knowing that his promises are true. Number seven, succeed through the power of his word, his spirit, and his will. Number nine, see spiritual purposes in every situation. I can tell you that there have been times when I thought that I could give up and my faith was lacking. But I had to see the spiritual purposes purpose of what the situation was for God had in my life because I was sick and I was serving God and I couldn't understand but my sickness turned out to be a testimony to the healing of God number 10 stabilize yourself when you're worried anxious and unsure of your directions for in Luke 9:62 in Luke 9:62 Jesus said Having put your hands to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom of God. That's our ultimate goal, is to be fit for the kingdom. What we have to do is leave behind all those hurts and sad things that have happened, 
all those disappointments, all those times when you wanted to give up, you have to keep praying. I have a little testimony uh, about my walk with the Lord and what I was able to do. I'm creating a, a, a cardinal sin by talking about how I had a blessing help someone, but it will, may bless my audience. I had a friend at church, a couple, uh, called Ralph and uh, his wife. He walked up to me one day in church, and they always had their heads down. They always felt they, they were not looking as good or coming across as good as everybody. And he asked me, he said, you know, Rob, I surely would want to own a suit like what you have on. And I said, oh, my Lord, the suit Marsha and the girls had just given me for Father's Day. It was a Nino Cerruti suit. It was the most expensive suit I've ever owned. Now, I could have went and got an old suit out of the closet, but the word says we give our best and we bless. Well, to make a long story short, I had to go buy him some shoes to wear with the suit I gave him. Marsha took his wife out shopping to get a new dress and new things and new purses and things. Now realizing you shouldn't talk about your blessings, but I am. The ultimate story was that Ralph and his wife's name was Desiree started a church. And just through that one kind act of me giving him that suit. And I had to ask my girls and their mother, is this something you really want me to do? And they said, yes, dad, we want you to bless that family. Ralph and Desiree went on to have one of the most powerful large ministries that have ever seen. So therefore, you've got to stabilize and help people get on the right track and, and be able to step out. And the last thing I'd like to say is we prayed about what we could do to be blessed. And we prayed and the word came to us that we had to step out in the ministry. Uh, most people do what we call church work. The word told us we had to do kingdom work. So about 30 years ago, a gentleman who's gone to be with the Lord, Wally Haas, was doing woodwork. And I said, I need some sign for me to look at whenever I need to be uplifted and encouraged. So Wally made me this sign that's hanging in my home today, and it says, Robbie and Marsha Robinson, kingdom work. So you see, church work is one thing. Kingdom work is witnessing, bringing people to the Lord, blessing people, telling people that they're going to have, it's going to be all right. God will bless you, and not have them dragging their disappointments around. So... I wanted to let you know that your home can be blessed and your life can be changed if you follow some of these little tips I gave you. And in lieu of a prayer this morning, I found a song that Marsha used to sing at church that really inspired me. And it goes like this. A maiden grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I will never know just how he came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. I shall forever Lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my failing soul. He looked beyond my faults and saw all my needs. I shall forever lift my eyes towards Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught 
my failing soul, he looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. May God bless you and keep you, and I hope we've said something that may give you a certain lift in your spiritual walk and help you get blessed and refocus. God bless you.